high fans of high quality entertainment, excuse me while I put in my case. Hi there. These are my real teeth, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I've talked about these books before, and this is the latest one. They're called On Track. Every album, every song. And this is the latest one that I just got yesterday. So I've just started to read it. A jinxy hair. My cat. So I have one, two, I have five other ones. And four out of the five are excellent. Frank Zappa, highly recommended, and they just and this is for, for between 1966 and 1979. Uh, goes through every album and every song, you know, just the guy's thoughts on it. Some, you know, some things I agree with, some I might not, but it's his opinion. Why should I care about his opinion? Uh, but it's really good. Genesis, every album, every song, and also all of these have not the greatest pictures. Some are just the album covers and little statement about them, but still, it's this is another very good one. Uh, every album, every song. I'll read uh, The Knife, one of my all-time favorite Genesis songs, especially the live version, but the studio version is great too. So this is from the uh, very first real Genesis album. This track was based on an idea from Banks and Gabriel called The Nice as a reference to Keith Emerson's group at the time, who were also signed to Charisma. At the time of recording Trespass, Emerson was already rocking his organ and using a knife to hold down keys on his Hammond to create a sustained drone note. The Second World War German dagger he often used was given to him by Lemmy from, of course, you know, from Motorhead, who was a roadie for the Nice and Jimi Hendrix before joining Hawkwind and later forming Motorhead. And then it goes on. So it's interesting. You know, stuff I didn't know. I bet you didn't know that. Yes, every album, every song, same thing. Excellent. I read these in the bath, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Excellent. Highly recommended. Blue Oyster Cult. Possibly my favorite. Really well done. Uh, and it goes through their whole career. There's a couple, uh, especially on this one, there's a couple of songs. I think one is on Mirrors which when it came out I wasn't a big fan of. I, I thought it was, you know, way overly commercial, but buying the box set, the remastered albums, I love everything Blue Easter Cult has done. I forget, I, mean, I, I apologize, I was looking for, there's a couple of songs though around the period of Mirrors and I love all of the songs and he puts uh, one of the, uh, I think it was an Albert Bouchard song and he kind of gave it a really negative review and I disagree with him but that's fine it's his, his opinion but the one uh, on track book that I was really disappointed in was the solo Beatles I don't recommend this book I almost regret buying it and the main reason is some of the uh, it's like, it's very hurried, there's printing errors. Uh, there's some songs where it's like a, a one sentence, and it's not like that with the other books. It's like they couldn't even be bothered to uh, I'll try and find one. Right here, uh, Tight As from Mind Games. This is his review. Rockabilly. Boom Chicka Boom. That's it. 
really, uh, really disappointing. But a lot of the, uh, there's some that he goes into detail and it's, you know, kind of interesting and you do learn a thing or two. But overall, like I said, it's very disappointing. Now this one, the Rolling Stones, every album, every song, like I said, I've, I just got it yesterday. I've just started to skim through it, but it's good. I'm very happy with it. Long, you know, quite a few long reviews on the songs. And I'll just read one. One song I absolutely love is... That some of you might not love, but I, I do. Let's see if he loves this song. I haven't... It's from Emotional Rescue. And I've mentioned the song before. All About You, sung by Keith Richards, the final song on the album. And, as if by magic, here comes good old Keith to do the non-emotional rescue as he delivers this excellent album closer. I told you on which Jager significantly does not even appear. See, it's, it's, you, re, you learn things that I, I didn't know. Written around the time he was coming off heroin, the world weariness in Richard's voice cannot be, a, be escaped on this bluesy, jazzy ballad, which conjures up the, feel, con, conjures up the feeling of coming down from a two-day bender. I know that feeling. But it goes on. And, yeah, it's, it, it's an astonishing way to round out the album's second decade and stands out from, from most of the rest of the album like heroin from Strawberries. Keith wouldn't have it any other way. So, highly recommend it. Also, uh, on Goat's Head Soup, I think it was the first three or four songs, and I didn't know this either, uh, Bill Wyman doesn't even, he isn't even on the song. It's Keith Richards that's playing the bass. Uh, then he finally, in the fourth or fifth song, he makes kind of a funny little quip about that he finally showed up. But yeah, highly recommended if you're a Rolling Stones fan. So just stay away from the, the solo Beatles and you'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Forgot. Forgot what I was supposed to say. I've only done this for almost 15 years. I'm getting tired of it. Just joking.